only three years into her business, and she's already spoken on 350 plus stages, including TEDx. Did I mention that she's 23 years old? Join me and Megan Gallagher for an inspiring pep talk that will have you questioning how you're showing up for your purpose. In this episode, you'll learn the importance of controlling your thoughts, why self-discipline is a requirement to achieve your dreams, how resourcefulness helped Megan launch her speaking career, and how many TEDx applications it took for Megan to land her first TEDx gig. Trust me, we all have something to learn from Megan. Megan Gallagher is a 23-year-old TEDx speaker, author, blogger, mental health advocate for teens, and motivational speaker. Growing up from ages 6 to 7 to 17, she struggled severely with anticipatory anxiety and panic attacks. After seeking holistic treatments at a young age, she began down the path of inward searching and feeling more grounded. During her first year of college, she had a health scare that changed her life and opened her up to why things happen the way they do. After having a healing session with the medical medium, Anthony Williams, she dove head first into pursuing her passions. She currently travels the country and speaks at middle and high schools about anxiety, intuition, and loving yourself. Now, before we begin the episode, I have something to share. I'm looking for conscious thought leaders who don't believe in sacrificing integrity for popularity, leaders who value congruency over image, connection over the vision, and collaboration over competition. If that's you, I invite you to apply to become one of the 10 leaders in the Thought Leader Collective. Head to www.rubyframon.com forward slash TLC for more info and to apply. If you dig this podcast, stay in the loop by signing up for my weekly emails. Sign up today at rubyfreebond.com forward slash subscribe. And finally, whether you're new to this podcast or a loyal thought leader, please make sure you take a moment to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Now it is time to learn how to relentlessly go after what you want with the one and only Megan Gallagher. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with an incredible guest today. Megan Gallagher is a 23-year-old TEDx speaker, author, blogger, mental health advocate for teens, and a motivational speaker. And she got her first TEDx speaking gig this year at the age of 23, which is phenomenal. But in addition to that, uh, what she has overcome in her life and the way in which she landed the TEDx gig is super fucking cool. So I have a feeling that her story and her insights and her wisdom is really going to support you, especially those of you who are going after your dreams, which is all of you because you're listening to this podcast. So without further ado, Megan, welcome to today's Thought Leader. I am so happy to have you on the show. How are you? I'm so excited to be talking with you today. (laughs) Yeah, I'm excited too. And um, I want to just mention how Megan got on my show. So Megan sent me a DM on Instagram. But the thing about Megan's DM is it wasn't canned or it didn't feel canned. Uh, It felt real and it felt like she actually wrote it to me. And it, um, yeah, it was it was refreshing for me to receive something like that. So hint, hint to everyone trying to get on podcasts or get whatever it is that you want to get and get published and get featured, like be real, don't use canned messages and um, just really come from an authentic place. So Megan, I really do appreciate the way in which you reached out to me. Um, Like I just said, it was very authentic. It felt super authentic. And um, you had my interest from there. Uh, What I think is super fascinating is that you're 23 and you were on like a major speaking circuit. (laughs) So tell us a little bit um, about what it is that, what you feel is your mission 
and, and what it is that you're doing about it? I am just extremely passionate about helping middle schoolers and high schoolers. So 13 to 18 year olds, because that age was when I struggled so badly with anxiety and chronic negative thinking, anticipatory, you know, panic attacks, body image issues, low self-esteem, just everything under that umbrella of Mm -hmm. Am I good enough? Am I pretty enough? Crying in dressing rooms, crying in the bathroom at school. Just like, I, I didn't want to be me. I was always trying to be another girl and I never felt good enough. So after years of seeing a therapist and changing my thoughts and getting to the root of why I have a fear of change and why I constantly compare myself, it was the most liberating feeling just knowing that I can control my thoughts Mm -hmm. and I can focus on what I want and I have that inner power within me. So I am so passionate about just being a bright, positive light for the young adults of this generation. Mm, I love that. Um, I literally just recorded an episode where I shared that you, the people that you're here to serve are the version of you that you were like a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Right. And it's like every single experience in our lives, every single experience and everything that we've overcome has equipped us with tools and insights and wisdom to do the work that we're doing. So, um, that sounds exactly like your path. Yes. And one of th- the thing that you just said about how it's like, I am being the role model that I wished was around Mm -hmm. when I was growing up. And I wish someone like me came into my school and was just, you're going to be fine, Megan, you're going to be okay. And this is a tiny part of your life. Just that, that light that people just need and they gravitate towards. And I swear, whenever I speak at a middle school or high school, I just, it's like, I see every single time I just see this the 12 year old Megan sitting in the audience. And I'm like, I'm doing this for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome that you're, you envision that because I'm sure that there are so many people in the audience that are really touched by what you're sharing. And especially at that age, I mean, even as adults, we don't talk about this enough and to have someone come out on stage and speak about anxiety and speak about what others are perhaps too ashamed to speak about or too scared to speak about or feel guilty for some reason to speak about. Um, I'm sure that opens doors and helps people in the audience feel more connected and that work is so needed. Yes. And every two things that are really interesting, every single school that I have spoken at, it just across the whole country, middle schools, high schools, private schools, anything, boarding schools, um, rehab, alternative schools, they always say that the number one reason for students being absent from class, it's always anxiety and depression related, which I'm like pretty, that's pretty just incredible in that in 2019, it's not, you know, my son has the cold, he has a flu. It's like, he's having a panic attack. He's having anxiety. He's burnt out and he's 12. It's, it's such an epidemic. And just my heart just goes out so much because I know exactly how I felt when I was growing up. And I know that there are kids when I speak who are listening that I don't know what their home life is like. I could be the only positive thing for them that day. That's just, so I really, I, it, warms my heart more than anything in the world. Mm, I love that because it shows how passionate you are about what it is that you're doing. Um, And getting to this place of actually being able to serve this audience really took you overcoming your own challenges and overcoming your own shit and overcoming your own anxiety, right? And this is, uh, I often share that this is like the journey of a leader is like we go through our lives, we overcome something, and then we get to lead a movement around that to share our wisdom and to share our insights and to serve other people and to help them. Um, And I love how you said that um, you're just being the role model you wish you had. You know, for all our listeners, this is about being the leader that you wish you had. 
It's about being the teacher that you wish you had, being the guide that you wish you had. And um, that really takes first overcoming your blocks and overcoming what it is that you're struggling with. Um, So I want to go back to, let's just share a little bit of your story. I would love to share a little bit so they understand, our listeners understand what you had to overcome to go get where you're at. Because I know for a fact that many of our listeners have or are going through anxiety or depression. And this could be super useful because when you're in it, and I'm Megan, I think you can agree when you're in it, it can often feel like it's never going to get better. No, and anxiety is it's like pulling teeth and that you feel like you're just digging yourself just deeper in this dark hole ditch and like, you're never going to get out of it. And Mm -hmm. it's like that awful, just stuck feeling like you're in quicksand and there's no one around and you're sinking. And it's like, you just feel the fight or flight awful feeling. But it took me, I mean, from ages three to 17, I had 12 panic attacks every single day. I was yeah, constantly feeling overwhelmed. From the age of three. Three, yeah, three years wow. old. <laughs> um, as, you know, I remember my mom just, I would cry and I would, wouldn't want to be alone. And I would just, it was such an awful feeling, but it taught me so much about, you know, the power of our thoughts. And why would I spend any time thinking all of these negative things that are just really, they're manifesting because now... I am spiritual and I believe that my thoughts are always creating my reality, but Mm -hmm. why why would I waste my time when I could choose to think positively just as much as I can choose to think negatively? I would rather think positive, productive, happy thoughts, but it was a really, really, really long journey of starting to see a therapist at 11 years old my mom introduced me to journaling at six years old and just continuously through middle school and high school, twice a week, a therapist for almost seven years. And Mm -hmm. it was just a lot of self-discipline, but I just, I feel like it happened for a reason because it taught me to focus on what I can control and to just improve my life every single day and to not get stressed about what that person could say, what that person is doing. What about this X, Y, Z, and to really just keep my mind just on a leash and close to me and not let it run off just on a tangent. Mm, That's a really good visual because that's what it feels like when I have anxiety is like my mind's running away. (laughs) Oh, the dog on a leash. Right. Like, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) And it starts pulling you and yeah, you want to get it back. Um, I also really love how you said self-discipline. I think a lot of people believe that, um, you know, in order to heal, um, it's just about surrendering and it's just about, um, you know, other people supporting us, but it really is a lot of self-discipline, a lot of self is it for me, it, it was like entirely self it, me and myself and, and becoming disciplined with mm. my routines, with my, the way in which I was taking care of myself, with my health, with my thoughts. And I know it's really easy to say, uh, control your thoughts and it's harder to actually do it. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy to say, think positive and it's harder to actually do it, but it's the awareness that creates the change, right? It's like becoming aware of, oh, I'm thinking negatively right now, or, oh, I'm thinking the worst case scenario right now. Yeah. Okay. Now, since I'm aware of this, I can either continue thinking the worst case scenario or I can shift my thoughts and focus on something better. Exactly. And I don't think that people realize how powerful we are as individuals, as one person, because we, you're right. I mean, you could start the day off, you know, I did my intentions, I did my morning routine. It's amazing. But then, you know, maybe you saw one person or you got stuck in traffic or you got an email and your stomach kind of sank like you're in an elevator and you're like, oh, I don't like that person. That person has weird energy or just something kind of put you just took you off that path. And now you feel the anxiety. Oh, gosh. But oh, but I did my no. You ha- that's when you have to when life happens, take a breath, get back in your lane and just keep on going and just get back to that morning routine where you just felt clear and good and 
nothing else mattered because that's, I think that's the true art of mastering your thoughts. When you can bring yourself back quicker each time Mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of (laughs) self-discipline. Right. Yeah. And that, what you just described is all self-discipline. It's, it's taking action from that, that place of awareness and quite often the action doesn't feel good because it's not our autopilot. It's not what we're used to doing, right? We're used to thinking the worst case scenario. We're used to being in our anxiety. We're used to feeling depressed. And so to take action that's going to lead us in a different direction can often feel very uncomfortable and very tough and very scary. Um, And so, yeah, we need self-discipline to do that. Yes. And also a big thing, because I feel like I went through all these things to be able to come out on the other side and to help teenagers who need that positive role model or just someone to tell them you are beautiful and you can do anything you want in your life. And it just, I want to just reinstill in teenagers that you can follow your dreams. Um, Because for me, luckily my parents constantly pushed me outside my comfort zone my whole life. They were like, Megan, you are not staying home. Yes, you are seven years old and you're crying about a sleepover, but you're not going to die. You're going to be fine. And you're going to overcome this. So they just, that constant pushing me outside my comfort zone, it created this lasting habit of, I know I'm going to be fine. And I know myself so well. And I became, my new normal was actually like, I like pushing myself outside my comfort zone. Like this Mm -hmm. feels good. And I enjoy this. And it's just, I know that there are so many teenagers who you know, just, I don't want them to get to 90 years old and think back on their life and think I let the negative thoughts win. That's Mm -hmm. my biggest mission motto. Something I say to myself, I don't want any young person who has so much potential and they can do anything. I don't want them to get to when they're 90 and they're like, wow, I, I did let the negative thoughts, the assuming, the worst case scenario, I let all of that control my one life. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And that's often what a lot of us do is we, we let that control us. And it sounds Mm -hmm. like you're now in a place where you're in control, which is incredible because now you're in a place where you can share your wisdom with everyone, which you're doing. I mean, how many schools do you speak at or have you spoken at? I started my business at 20 years old, and since then, I have spoken at 350 schools, and I speak at about eight to nine middle schools and high schools per month, and it's, it's just my absolute passion, and I, I feel almost like, you know, Oprah Winfrey when she was like, you get a car, you get, like, just yeah. insane, and um, it just, it's my, I just, I know it's, where I'm supposed to be because I kind of black out and I just am channeling something and the words just come out and I just feel so happy and right where I'm supposed to be. But it's, it it wasn't, you know, it, it took a lot of work though. I mean, I had to create my career and my resume and speak for free when I first started and have a side job and just speak at YMCA's boys and girls clubs, rotary clubs, do Toastmasters, public speaking Mm -hmm. classes, make a YouTube channel, anything one-on-one coaching with teen girls. I just did it, did it, did it. And I just did not stop. It was like, is there a plan A? Okay. Plan B, plan C. Right. Okay. So that's what I want to talk about now because it's really easy to have a purpose. It's, it can feel really tough to actually pursue it right? Because that's where the discipline comes in. That's where the devotion comes in. That's where the, the effort comes in. And you started your business at 20. And since then you've spoken at 350 schools, uh, thought leaders, listen up for those of you, especially who want to speak and you have yet to speak on one stage, like you have something to learn from Megan. So you've essentially been relentless in your pursuit of, in the pursuit of your vision and your purpose. I mean, it, that's just what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I, I, I think a lot of it is inner drive and just, I know exactly what I want and I have my goals and I'm so self-disciplined, like my diet, my lifestyle, my habits, my thoughts, my routines. It's so nailed down. But you created and, that. Yes. Let's emphasize you created that. It's not like you were born 
with like this mass amount of self-discipline, you created this for yourself. Yes, I created it. And it's, it's pretty remarkable because at 13 years old, no, I never thought I would be speaking about anxiety openly on TV and in podcasts. And it was my f- secret. It was my fear. It was, uh, it's my, it's embarrassing. It's my thing that I don't ever talk about. And I just deflect with humor or anything else. But it's like, I created this person that I am now through therapy and meditation and EFT tapping and crying and just like not giving up on myself and being self-disciplined and want wanting it. Mm -hmm. So in order to, would you say that in order to really pursue what is that you want, your vision, your purpose, um, one of the key things would be to never give up on yourself. You can't because I mean, if you really think about it and this is something that helps kind of, if I'm ever feeling lazy and I need, just need to kick in the ass, I think about, okay, you know, I'm 23 years old. And also I had a health scare at 20 years old. And that is something that gave me so much damn fire under my ass. I was like, had my health taken away for seven months and then I got it right back. And I'm like, okay, I dove headfirst into everything because I had that motivation of life can change in an instant. Mm -hmm. I want to be remembered for X, Y, Z and for following my passions and for being a positive light in this world. I'm going to use every single day, every suck it all, suck up all the good stuff every second of every day because I had that health scare and that just put so much perspective. So if anyone is ever feeling like, oh, you know, I sent in one email and I didn't get a response. It's like, honey, like try harder. Keep on going. Keep on going. Like that's Mm -hmm. how my parents raised me. They were like, keep on going, go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then you kept on going, Mm -hmm. you kept on going to 350 schools and you're still going eight to nine schools per month. And you spoke at TEDx this year. Yes. (laughs) So I know, I know a bit about this story and I really want our listeners to hear this story because I know, um, you know, I've, I've even had clients that have dreams of speaking at TEDx and they'll send in an application, doesn't get through. And then they feel completely deflated. And I know people who have experienced this over and over again with a lot of different things like speaking, speaking gigs, um, getting on podcasts, like they just give up too easily. And your story is a little different on how you acquired this TEDx gig. So why don't you share with our audience how this magic unfolded? Yes, it is a little bit different. Um, But I, so for two straight years from, I had just turned 21 and now I'm 23. I, a TEDx talk as a speaker, it's a really big honor and it's just a bucket list item for me. So I had it on every vision board and I was like, I want to get a TEDx talk. I'm going to get it. And I just kept at it for two years. I sent in six applications every single day on the weekends. I didn't make excuses on Mondays, on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. I just, I, I wasn't going to let myself down. And I had that motivation of, I don't want to be 90 years old and look back and be like, Oh my God, Megan, you were so young and you had so much energy and you just didn't do it because you kept on making up excuses. I, put in the time. I sent in applications. I would find out the co-organizers, their names on Facebook. I would DM them on Twitter. Just, I was like a tiger. I was like, I need this. I'm going to get this. And I did not stop. And then in March, March 8th of 2019, I finally got an email back and I knew it was a good email because it was super long. And it just was like, yes, you can speak at our event. We have one speaker who got mono and they're pulling out. So we need a spot. We, we need someone to fill the spot. Would you want to do it? I was like, yes, <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> yes. And he's like, okay, well you have two weeks to prepare. The other speakers have had five months, so it's up to you. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I want it so bad. I do not care. I have worked so hard for this, but I 
I would say just to anyone who wants to apply to a TEDx talk, who wants that, just that crazy cool moment on stage where it's like, pinch me, this is so awesome. Don't give up. Like maybe it's not going to take you two years, but just don't get discouraged. Have the attitude of this is happening for me, not to me. This, this one rejection, this person emailing me saying, oh, sorry, you missed the deadline, or your talk doesn't fit in the theme of our event this mm -hmm. year, or no, we have enough speakers. Great. What's next? Have that just get in the habit of thinking like, not constantly looking towards the future, but if you want something, you have to have tough skin and really just let's go, let's go. I'm not stopping till I get it kind of attitude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, two years yeah. of sending in six applications per day. Mm -hmm. Two years. Listeners, yeah. are you listening? Two years of sending in six fucking applications a day. So if any of you listening have a dream of getting a TEDx talk, here's a method, apply every day. <laughs> apply every day, use it, whatever time you have in the mornings, the night times, just the weekends, you have five minutes, it does not take long. I would know, I know exactly <laughs> what they I know the, the back, like the back of my hand, they, it's so short, it takes about two to three minutes and it's, you, that to me, when I got it, I felt like, I was, I feel like I've been climbing up a mountain for five years and I'm like seeing a mirage. I'm like, right. It's here. Like, <laughs> whoa. I felt like Forrest Gump running across America, like just so crazy, but it happened when it was meant to, because at that TEDx talk, I, I killed it. it. I said it, everything went so perfect, but then I really thought after maybe I wouldn't have been ready, you know, to like the first year or five mm -hmm. months ago, I think just to also not get so disappointed and to keep that goal because along the journey, there were many phone calls, just crying, calling my parents, my sister, my friends, this isn't going to happen. I don't, all of these negative thoughts, but about halfway through, I just, I felt this epiphany of wait, I can bring this back to my old, good old anxiety days from 11 years old and focus on what I want. Mm -hmm. And take, take that power back and see if that helps me. And it did. And it's just, I, I don't know. It's just the way that things happen, but I, it was the best thing ever. And I, it, it takes a lot of work, but I really like to share that story of just to anyone, any dream you have, do not give up mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. <laughs> yeah. Consistency always wins, right? Like consistency will always get there, you there. And especially if there's something that you want bad enough, like put in the effort to do it and go after it and mm -hmm. refuse to give up on yourself and refuse to give up on the dream, whether it's speaking at TEDx or speaking at a certain uh, other event or, um, you know, traveling the world, whatever your dream is, like, don't give up on it and actually make in the effort, the daily effort, like yes. day in and day out to go yes. after it. Um, and then did the school speaking gigs, I mean, those were obviously, cause you said you started at 20. So those started at 20. Um, not exactly. It was a little bit, you know, speaking for free and just kind of getting right. my speaking reel at YMCA's, Boys and Girls Clubs, Rotary meetings, Toastmasters, mm -hmm. public speaking meetings, anything that involved being on stage, just any exposure or practice. Right. I was at it like five times a week, just getting it in and getting practice and really becoming a really just polished speaker. Um, and then when I turned 21, that's when I started, you know, driving around to schools every single day with my business cards. And <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing, but I feel like the theme of my journey is just, I didn't give up. I don't right. care if I looked weird or if <laughs> my business card, I had just made it online and I'm like <laughs> you know, a 21 year old trying to look proper going up to principals and school nurses and counselors. <laughs> I just, I found a way and I just made it happen. I really, right. I just you did. made it happen. And that's, you know, it's, it's, this is going to be, um, this might be a love punch for some of you listening. FYI, I'm just going to warn you. 
There are so many people in the leadership and personal development space and industry that will call themselves a speaker, but have yet to speak on stage anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're actually not doing the work to get on those stages either. Right. They just expect the shit to come to them. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it works. And I love that you chose to first speak for free Mm -hmm. and do this five days a week. FYI, I did Toastmasters as well and totally love it. It's like, yes, <laughs> like the best, most affordable speaker, speaker training ever. It's so, it's so much fun. <laughs> and it's so fun when you find the right like Toastmasters group. Yeah. Um, I found this one in LA called Heart Centered Toastmasters and we got- That's the one that I did. Shut <laughs> up. Oh my God. Okay. We're having a moment, audience. We're having a moment. We're having a moment. We must have just missed each other or something. Yes. Heart Center Toast Toastmasters. <laughs> Alumni reunite. Yes. Um, anyway, so for those of you listening, and I say this a lot to my clients too, is you want speaker training? Cool. Go to Toastmasters. Like it's right there. There's so many resources at our fingertips. And what I, I love know. is that you have been resourceful. I know. And that's a really good point is like, I, I didn't make excuses. I didn't, you know, Oh, I'm going to wait. I didn't make excuses. I just made it happen. I, I wasn't like, okay, I'm going to, you know, wait till I get this fancy dancy $500,000. I need to know this person. I just did it right. with, my, with my resources and what I had. And I think that makes for the most successful people is they right. just do it with what they have. And then yeah. they create that habit through you know, maybe they'll have more money in the future and more connections, but they still have that attitude of, I'm just going to make it happen. Right. And you did that also to create your, to compile footage, to create your speaker reel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I literally would have, you know, just my friends, my roommates, whomever come with me to Toastmasters, to speaking at the YMCA's, the boys and girls clubs, and they would film me on my phone. And it just, I would make my YouTube channel on photo booth and I didn't get so worried about comparing myself to this influencer or this speaker, or what if I'm not pretty enough or good enough, or I don't have the followers or the lighting or the, the, you know, the tech equipment. I just did it because I was passionate about speaking. Growing up, I did acting, you know, in drama classes and I loved, I it felt like an escape from my anxiety. So I was like, this is what I'm passionate about it. And I know it's what I'm meant to do on earth. So it's going to happen. I'm just going to find a way to enjoy the journey. <laughs> mm, uh, yeah. Um, and you've been enjoying the journey, which is great. Uh, we can definitely feel your passion. And I think that's like, it, no one can deny that. And I love yeah. that you've been riding your passion to make it happen. I mean, really, and just your sheer um, willingness and drive and your resourcefulness to get what you want. And only being 23. Like, I can't mm -hmm. imagine what you're going to create for yourself and your mission and those you're here to serve in the next five years. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I still feel like pinch me is, you know, is this really happening? Because truly, and this, one of my favorite quotes ever is trust the timing of your life and things really happen for a reason because you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and then I moved down to Los Angeles straight after high school because I was like, I want something different. My town mm -hmm. was kind of tiny. I'm like, I want a big city, something fun. And I went to Santa Monica City College and the plan, you know, was to get good grades and transfer to a four-year college. Mm -hmm. And I also was like, I'm really unhappy. Something about this, I'm not passionate about it. I just, I never liked academics. Something isn't right, but I, you know, slowly actually became physically sick. And then that was a whole entire crazy seven month long health scare where I was in and out of hospitals trying 20 different antibiotics. I got MRIs, CAT scans, mm -hmm. blood work, and every doctor was like, you're fine. You're not sick. You're fine. And it was such a crazy time in my life, but it also really opened my eyes to, well, you know, maybe this health scare is actually happening for me because I'm not happy in school. And I always loved being on stage and kind of just having these epiphany moments. And then so like that health scare, I mean, that just seems like yesterday to me, but 
the idea, I wrote a bucket list when I was sick because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm never going to get better. I, it was such a scary time. I didn't know if what was wrong with me, but I made a bucket list of all of the things that I wished I had tried when I was healthier, you know, mm -hmm. no insecurities, no, no money, nothing, nothing, no limits. What would I do right now? What are my passions? What would I do? Like bucket list, YOLO and <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> I know I just brought back that word. <laughs> um, I was like, no limits. Like, what would I want to do? What is, what does my heart want? What makes me happy? And I wrote it down on this bucket list. And then the moment I had my health back, I just dove headfirst into this bucket list because I just knew I was like, my health could be taken away again. I still, it was, I was like, wow. So the whole journey has really just been this kind of eye opening, just trusting the universe. Just, it's been a really crazy journey, but I'm happy. Like I've never been this happy in my whole life. So it kind of is all coming together and I'm still just feeling so grateful and like pinch me and like, this is really all happening. And like, I get, I have the honor of speaking to teenagers and sharing my story. And for one hour, I get to be a positive role model to them and I get to feed them with us. Like I really have that honor. And so I, I take it so seriously. And every day I just like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> mm. I love that. And you get, you're creating this, right? And what a change from back when you were, you know, three to 12 and, and or three to 17 and dealing yeah. with anxiety and focusing on all the negative. And I'm sure like, even now there's like bad shit that happens, but it's where you put your focus and you're focusing on where you're going and you're putting in the effort to make it happen no matter what, like this has become a non-negotiable for you. Your dream has become a non-negotiable. And I think that everyone listening can learn from this. Like this is the amount of drive that it takes to go after your dreams. You know, this is what it actually takes. It's, yes. not, it's not about beating yourself up when shit doesn't go your way or staying down when you fail, it's about going and going and going and going and making it happen. I mean, this is how a 23 year old has spoken at 350 schools and has a TEDx talk. You're head of the curb <laughs> and, and we all have something to learn from you. Um, so we are nearing the end of this episode and we talked about a, a few different things, but um, for our listeners, is there any final thoughts that you want to share with them? Oh, wow. I, I would just say if you have a dream or you feel intuitively gut feeling like you just want to start a new chapter or just something in your life where you feel overwhelmed or, oh my gosh, I can't handle this or anything, just remember that your clothes are like your thoughts are like the clothes that you pick out in the morning to wear. Mm -hmm. Like you pick your outfit every single day, what you want to wear, just as you pick your thoughts. So remember that you create your thoughts and you control them. So throughout life, you know, situations, people, events may happen where you're a part of your mind wants to focus on that and get overwhelmed and stressed and dramatic and feel into kind of like, more negative emotions and just the constant not knowing, but remember that you also have the control to focus on your goal and the positive productive stuff of, you know what? I, I got up today. I did my intentions, my morning routine. I just, you know, I did my hair. I did my makeup. I accomplished a lot. That is a blessing. And that is such a good thing. And just, do not give up and know that whatever you are currently thinking about, it doesn't just go nowhere. It's manifesting into your reality and you are pulling stuff into your life like a magnet. So make sure it's good stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was Megan channeling her goodness. Yeah. At the end there. <laughs> that was Megan on stage. Uh, yeah. Megan, thank you so much for, for just coming on the show, for sharing your wisdom, for sharing parts of your story. Um, and I know, I know for a fact that 
our listeners are going to gain a lot from this. If anything, this is the kick in the ass that they needed. Okay. Yes. No. And I, I really like, I feel like I just was pulling my own self, like, come on, Megan, towards the end of like getting to a finish line. But mm -hmm. Whatever your goals are, just know that, you know, it's never too late to just, I, like, I hate it when people are like, oh, but I'm, you know, but I'm this age or I wait, or I, or I wait, or I weigh this much or just all the, don't think of the excuses and the stuff that's just really, if you think about it all day, it's not really going to lead you anywhere. Think about what you do have, what you can be grateful about and what you can change. Like maybe you can work out today or set some time to get enough sleep or send 10 emails. Like just start, just start. Yeah. Start. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> just start. Um, Megan, tell our listeners how they can stalk you online. And then I will be sure to have those links and more in the show notes. Yes. So you can stalk me. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram. My name is Megan. The username is Megan, M-E-G-A-N-W Gallagher. I'll that have is, it in the show notes so they can yes. spell it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but Megan W. Gallagher, that's my same name on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. I have it all. And feel free if you know if you are a teacher or a counselor or you know someone who needs a motivational speaker for a school um i just i'm extremely passionate about it and i also have the same profile picture on all of my social media accounts <laughs> <laughs> now that is organized so you will know it is me yes yeah <laughs> Awesome. Megan, thank you so much for being here today. And to our listeners, thank you so much for joining Megan and I on today's Thought Leader, where we are challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. If you loved this episode with me and Megan, please be sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes and share it with a friend. If you have any questions that you want to share or insights that you gained from this episode, please be sure to reach out to Megan and I on social media. My social media handle is at I am Ruby. And I will see you back here on Thursday for a brand new episode of Today's Thought Leader.